We have to get still get the voices out to the masses that there are things you can do as in the female body to help yourself not only, you know, postpartum, but also prehab for delivery and get ready to have that baby. There's been this adversarial relationship between the traditional medical model yes. and alternative medicine. And really, um, I think we can all do better on the patient's behalf. Um, it's not necessarily like us versus them. For us as providers, it's such an honor to be able to build that relationship with our patients um, and know that we're trusted. And because we are, we're able to help them on their healing journey. What's going on everybody? Kyle Powers here, Haven Real Estate Group at eXp Realty, here with another episode of Local Legends of the Flint Hills, where business meets community. I've got three very special guests here with me. Uh, I've got Kelly Nelson Greenwald and Sarah Siders here with The Healing House here in Manhattan, Kansas. Ladies, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. us. Yeah, yeah, so let's, uh, let's kind of just, let's get into it, right? So talk to us a little bit about what uh, what, where the inspiration was to create the healing house and what that actually was for you guys. Yeah, so we, um, Jessica and I joined forces um, about six years ago. She had the Flint Hills Family Chiropractic here initially, and then I joined um, as an LLC or independent contractor six years ago. So we've been together a hot minute. We've enjoyed each other's company. We um, basically have kind of um, grown into having the similar dream of having a wellness collective and eventually it has come into fruition because we took the plunge and changed our name and to the healing house a wellness collective and here just within a few months of each other we had awesome people join so we had an awesome group of ladies Sarah Siders a mental health professional we have um, Leslie Graves a dietitian holistic dietitian who's been here for a few years now who also had a similar dream as us um, who's amazing and then we have Natalie who is a dry needling specialist and a PT and Michelle who's an herbalist and acupuncturist and then obviously Dr. Jessica and I who are both chiropractors um, that treat all the people including little people to young to old so um, yeah that's kind of what it was we had a dream and we you know jumped off and did it and it came about and like again it was so crazy it was just within a month at least i mean up seriously a month we had michelle natalie and sarah hop on with us and it's been the best blessing and i really thank god that it's turned out this way because i couldn't ask for a better group of women to work with so yeah, I'd love, awesome. to, oh. I'd love to yeah. just add, you know, the integrative model is something that is still fairly new, even though it makes so much sense. Yeah. Um, and having, you know, so many different disciplines here in the clinic, and then also being a mental health professional, we often get, you know, our own clinic. And it really meant a lot to me opening my practice back up this year to be in a place where we were talking to, you know, to each other, um, being able to consult on various issues um, that our clients and patients have come up and being able to create a robust and holistic approach to our patient care. Um, and so it's just been such a, a blast, like she said. I think a lot of people have thought about doing the integrative model. I hear people talk about it and people are moving toward it. It definitely is the future, um, but it there's, there's definitely some things that you don't necessarily take into consideration when you're getting started. And it's been, um, it's been a great challenge for us. And we're such a good team. We work so well together. I think that makes honestly such a huge difference. Um, and so, you know, I know that there's other people that want to do this and I would love to encourage others to, to take the plunge themselves. The integrative model is so rewarding and it really is lovely to be able to treat patients in this way. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's part of it too, right? Surrounding yourself, <clears throat> surrounding yourself with like-minded people is, is the, is what everybody says, right? The, yes. the five rich people in the room, you're going to be the six rich one, six, five poor people, et cetera, it's, right? Like it's so, so much true. truth to that. And I think, yeah. so surrounding yourself with those like-minded people is very important for you guys yeah. too, so. So as a woman owned and operated uh, comprehensive health and wellness and, and care uh, here in Manhattan, how has that influenced with your patient care and things of that nature? Yeah, um, we are a women owned practice, as you said. And so 
I think the big story is that we are our patients and clients. In fact, um, that's v that's very literally true for me. So I started coming here in 2017, um, looking for some support that was very specific to the w women's life cycle. I was looking for fertility support. Um, I needed, you know, I wanted to be understood by women in the chiropractic practice. I've been going to chiropractors for a long time, and um, so I've been a patient here for you know seven years or something like that. Um, and so it, it has been. Um, just a natural part of this process is that, you know, we're treating women and families across the lifespan. And part of the reason that we're so good at it is because we can sit down across from one of our patients and say, I understand your story because that's part of my story. I've needed um, supplemental alternative medicines to fill out the spectrum of, of care that I've needed um, for myself. And we've all had that story. And so um, I think that's something that we are able to do our values um, that the guide our practice is ask, listen, and empower. And so we don't want people to feel like they're going to need to um, have this exact same kind of treatment, whether it's um, dry needling, um, acupuncture, mental health therapy. Uh, it's like we want to empower you um, by allowing you to feel heard and feel like you have the right tools and the right um, skills, the right um, exercises that you can go home and do, and you can become your own healer um, and you can pass that on to your kids and your families. Yes. And so we just yes. love um, being able to support the community in that way. Women are so intrinsically tied into community through relationships. And so we're able to serve in that way. Um, and again, just because we are you, we understand your story um, to, to a degree and we want to be part of your healing journey. Yeah. yeah. No, I love, love it. it. Do you want yeah. anything? You good? That was perfect. All right. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> perfect. Well, and I think, you know, I think it's important though, too, like, un like you said, I mean, understanding as a woman where you're coming from, because yeah. be honest, like I wouldn't understand, you know, giving birth or anything else that comes with that. That's I okay. just, and it is, yeah, you're right. Exactly. But I'm not going to sit here and try to tell you how to do it either. Right. Well, like true. it's, really appreciate that's it. <laughs> but that's the key to it. Right. Yeah. My wife would kill me if I did. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I so here at the healing house, you guys offer a wide range of services, right? From chiropractic care to mental health and everything in between, uh, how using those modalities and everything that comes with that, how do you guys help uh, someone who comes in and how does that work and integrate within your, your business here? Um, I, one of the reasons why we wanted to create a wellness collective is so we could kind of be that one stop shop for people. And I feel like now we kind of have everybody here and it, you can treat the body as a whole mind, body, and spirit. So we got mind, body or mind and spirit over here, but then, um, body can take up the rest of us, you know what I mean? And even then, you know, acupuncture, dry needling, those can, are, can hit emotional components. Uh, chiropractic yeah, is going to, yeah. all of it affects the nervous system um, in a way or to a degree. Um, and so at any rate, we're all addressing mind, body, and spirit. But to have specific people in here addressing the specific things, um, we can do those internal referrals yeah. so easily because somebody comes into me and I'm like, the first things they might say are, oh man, I'm achy all over, or, you know, I'm trying to think of some other symptoms. Basically, if somebody comes in and tells me that and they're a female and they potentially are postpartum, um, I'm going to be like, you need to see Leslie because they probably have inflammation widespread and they're not going to just benefit from chiropractic alone. They probably have some chemical imbalances, nutritional deficiencies that need to be addressed. And I'm not going to be the one to do that. Leslie is better suited for those things, um, even though I, ha I know a teeny bit, but Leslie, Know, is the person we go to for that, our go-to. So um, that's her specialty. So it's just really awesome to be able to have those each individual specialties where, you know, I we can just use each other and utilize that. And, oh my gosh. It just, it's been really fun to see people get, feel so much better and relief and like just um, not only physical relief, but like mental and emotional relief just from being like, oh my gosh, somebody's finally listening to me. And yeah. I finally got to the place I needed to be. I just had a patient tell me that yesterday, like that addressed her inflammation and they're finding out other things with autoimmune stuff. And that wouldn't have happened if I wouldn't have sent her to Leslie. So it's just really, um, been special and to be able to be a part of their journey, you know, um, and just to be able to be like guiding them by the side. And then that might not be fully 
chiropractic or right. just me I, or just Sarah. It's right. you have to remember it takes a team to get that person better. And so I think that's why it's been so fun because to have those internal referrals. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just over here agreeing. Okay. Do you have anything? Uh, yeah. You're good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. No, that's awesome. That's, I mean, it's back to know what you know and know what you don't know and exactly. get people and have into trusted people on your team exactly yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So we do. absolutely with a focus on women's health and everything that you guys have here uh at, at the at the healing house you guys have been able to kind of focus on every stage of of life right like from um prenatal to to uh what uh, menopause and everything in between yeah. on that how have you been able to help women and help support the families and everything that comes with that well, you know, as I mentioned, we are also our patients, right? We're going through these things. Um, we're asking the questions and we're doing the research um, on behalf of ourselves and our patients. And women have historically been left out of clinical research until the 90s. We didn't see a lot of women showing up in research. So, so um, you know, drug research, medical research that was done was actually done for weight men. Loss. Weight loss. There's so many things. And so really med medicine and science is getting caught up um, with what women have just known, you know, kind of in anecdotally uh, between each other for, for years. And so we're very much uh, wanting evidence-based practice, um, whether in each of our disciplines so that we can provide the, the best care that we can. Um, but we're learning along with yeah. so many of these new providers. There's been a huge emphasis on um, perimenopause and menopause, for example. Um, about 10 years ago when I was having my babies, there was a huge emphasis on postpartum mental health. And so, you know, as this practice has started over the last 10 years and even with Healing House Emerging Now, um, we are the, the, the uh, just the beneficiaries of just so much more focus on uh, women's health and research, whether it's from the, the fertility side, um, prenatal, postpartum into perimenopause and menopause we are learning we are going through these stages ourselves um, and so it's been it's a, it's been a journey for all of us but I would say that because we are in our women's bodies we are doing this we're, we're doing this research and we are able and ready to bring this to our patients at every stage just as this uh, medical research and these best practices emerge yeah yeah um, and also I would say like, like what you said, we are in these bodies. And, yeah. you know, for me, starting out, I was big on sports injury prevention and treating sports injuries. And obviously, anybody can have a sports injury, young to old, male, female, doesn't matter. So that was like my bread and butter because I used to be a, an athlete. We were just talking about how we played softball. Yeah. <laughs> um, but obviously, I've had kids, and that doesn't mean I haven't stopped being active. But Definitely my priorities have changed because you realize and you learn so much about prenatal, your body changes so much and it never goes back. You have to learn about why and what's happening. And when I had my first kiddo, there wasn't a lot of stuff out there. Now it's blown up with prenatal and um, postpartum uh, rehab and all those things, which is awesome. But we have to get still get the voices out to the masses that there are things you can do as in the female body to help yourself not only you know, postpartum, but also prehab for delivery and get ready to have that baby. Um, and I think for myself, like, again, not only, you know, I still have to treat sports injuries on my own body, which I'm currently doing, but um, also I'm still big on that prenatal postpartum, all that stuff. Um, and it doesn't mean we have to, like, you're not going to not treat somebody that's newly having a baby oh, yeah. Yeah. just because you want to treat the more of the midlife and yeah. just same with me like I still love treating male female young old across the board but I think it's like you have a special connection with where you're at mm -hmm. in the moment you're at and yeah, I like yeah. here we are and I'm so that's my special connection I think right now is like I love seeing women come in who are in that postnatal phase that just need an, a little extra love and attention because that is my my situation right now mm -hmm. so yeah it's a lot of empathy <laughs> yeah yeah no and i and you're pulling from personal experiences mm -hmm. which is exactly. powerful yeah. very powerful okay so the healing house has been open just just under a year now mm -hmm. what does the future of the healing house look like for expansion and and uh, adding different modalities and things like that what does that look like for you guys yeah um so we definitely are looking to expand with um multiple different modalities whether it's um 
similar to what we already have or mm -hmm. different. Um, we want to, again, be there for the masses and be there um, for like that, or be there to be that one-stop shop for place for people. So yeah. um, definitely room for expansion and room for growth. And we are excited about it. So we'll see what the, we, we'll, mm -hmm. we will see. Yeah. We'll oh, see. Yeah, yeah. there's so. definitely growth plans on the horizon. Yes. yes. Yeah. Practices like the Healing House or, or in collectives like the Healing House, how do you guys envision the role of holistic health care and wellness uh, in the future and what that looks like? Yeah, um, the, the focus on alternative medicine and um, wellness practices is expanding. Um, in so many ways, we're returning to our human roots. Um, you know, you see these practices um, across cultures, across time. And so we're in some ways rediscovering them. But in the United States, over the last 100, 150 years, uh, the traditional medical model has emerged as kind of the core, uh, you know, standard of practice. And it's, it's, it's very valuable for people. It's obviously saving lives. Um, and we have needed, in addition to that, these alternative medicines that that look almost like you know one choice or the other. And in my experience, um, I need both. I need to have my primary care doctor. I've needed my OBGYN, and I've needed my chiropractor, um, my nutritionist, functional medicine, all those different people speaking into my life and my holistic health. And so, in the past, I think it's been um, there's been this adversarial relationship between the traditional medical model yes. and alternative medicine, and really. Um, I think we can all do better on the patient's behalf. Um, it's not necessarily like us versus them. Um, and so that's something that I, you know, with my mental health background, there is is a little bit of a traditional element to that. Um, and so I feel like that's something that I've needed to have myself. I've needed to adjust my own um, perspective sometimes when I think, oh, I'm being misunderstood by the traditional model. I'm going to rebel against this. I still need to participate. I had my yeah. baby is, uh, you know, at the hospital. Um, and and so I need to be, to be able to navigate both spaces. Um, and I think that, again, on the patient's behalf, we want to all be working together to see them be successful. We're a team. Yeah. We're, we're a patient care team. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I think that like again we were integrating all of our disciplines together under this um you know the the umbrella of the healing house and i just think there's going to be um potentially even more traditional um you know disciplines that are coming to be to participate with us because we all know that we do need to be on the same team um and i'm seeing more participation and more yeah. acceptance of like what was you know an alternative yep. uh, modality in the past is you know, um, yoga, yeah. trauma-informed yoga, um, acupuncture, those are all things that even like the VA is, mm -hmm. is promoting for, um, for their soldiers uh, who are active duty or retired. And you see like, okay, if the VA is promoting it, then it's becoming a little bit more mainstream. Awesome. Um, it's very exciting to yeah. see that. And so, yeah, I think that people are starting to go, oh, we're not, it's not either or, it's both and, and let's work together um, again on behalf of the patient. Yep. One thing I always love hearing from, especially in, in medicine, right? Like I want to hear your success stories. So yep. what is one moment in time, one patient, one group of patients, whatever it looks like, uh, where you've been like, oh my gosh, I'm really glad I'm doing this today. Or really glad, like we talked off camera of God put me here for a reason, right? Like yep. he put me here for this moment in time for, for whatever it is. So what is that one success story that you guys would like to share? Um, I have, it's hard to choose because it's like getting somebody pregnant is, or like help, I shouldn't say getting somebody pregnant, that's not the right thing to say, but being someone that can be a part of their journey and helping guide them by the side and give them good like tidbits that they can take and utilize, whether it's nutrition, chiropractic, whatever that helps them to get pregnant or, or it's like somebody has an aha moment with sports injuries and, or with exercises I give them and then now they can manage their low back pain a lot better and not have to come in all the time. Like those are all great. But recently, um, I actually had a person come in who I had, I caught a blood clot in, and that was very significant because, you know, had this person not come in on that day, um, had they not told me, okay, you know, I feel like there's a strain in the back of my 
you know, calf and all these things like came in a perfect place. Uh, again, I think it was a God thing that like made me, okay, let's look, take a look. And there it was, or, well, you know, uh, we could just see the signs and symptoms of a potential blood clot happening. And it's one of those things where you don't know, but let's play it on conservative side. And sure, sure enough, they went to the doctor and it was one. And you, I think, again, God just put me in the place in that time. So that, that was definitely a scary success story, but it is one of those things that we as providers also have to be, be there for. And as chiropractors, we are putting hands on body every visit. So you are going to see those things, whereas other providers are not always doing that. So I think um, we a lot of times are going to be those people that are going to catch these types of things that are scary, but but also thank God, you know, that, that we were able, I was able to catch it on that time. But, sure. but, um, but yeah, the more exciting success stories are the ones I had mentioned previously. So they're all good. Yes, they but, are. Um, but yeah, so there you that go. That makes a, a big difference. And sure. chiropractic, you guys are doing so many amazing things. Um, you know, I'm, I am a success story of the clinic of when I had a major shoulder injury, you know, Dr. Jessica was giving me tools and working on me and was able to um, get me back into a, a really significant working condition. But I mean, I was, I was completely, you know, messed up. Um, and so it was just, it's amazing to have, I already had that relationship, right? Um, with her. And I think relationship is honestly like the foundation. So in mental health, um, there, you know, we can't necessarily look at someone and put them through a scanner and say, oh, you have depression. Now we can look at brain scans, we can't see brain activity. Um, and, and that really is amazing. But we don't do that in this clinic. Um, and so we're relying on, uh, you know, various treatment modalities, uh, kind of theoretical approaches. And I would say that primarily we're relying on the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, there's a trust relationship that forms with, you know, the chiropractor. Here's this patient saying something to you, um, giving you access to, to look at their leg. And you can, you know, make this judgment. Uh, for me, when I think about, you know, getting started here this year, one of the clients that came in um, fairly early on had a situation that they were dealing with that was creating enormous anxiety. Anxiety, um, and they needed to, you know, there was kind of a deadline on, you know, facing off against some of these, this issue that they were concerned with. And what was, what I knew I needed to do immediately was like, hey, I, you need to know that, that I like you and we need to build trust together. Mm -hmm. And the trust is the bridge upon which the care, uh, the care is delivered, right? Yeah. It's that relationship, knowing that um, I'm looking at you, I'm hearing your story, I'm validating what's happened. Maybe that's never happened before for you. Um, and now based on that bridge that we've built, we're able to, um, you know, shift how you see this thing, give you tools that you can use in the moment, um, empower you. And so many of my clients are, you know, went from, you know, they start weekly and then they they go to every other week mm -hmm. or, you know, space it out um, relatively quickly because we're able to make a shift for them. And I want them to have that relationship. I mean, I've been to therapy, I've had life coaching uh, myself, and those relationships are so important just to have like kind of on hand uh, when when things are hard, but you don't necessarily need like crisis treatment or acute treatment or to come in twice yeah. a week, um, you know, like all the time. There's just periods of time where you need more help. And, and having those relationships built, um, it's something of insurance for us and, and for us as providers, it's such an honor to be able to build that relationship with our patients um, and know that we're trusted. And because we are, we're able to help them on their healing journey. Yeah, so good. Oh, I love it. I love it. So let's, before we kind of wrap it up here, I got a couple more questions. But first, I want to, somebody watching this video, right? Somebody out there watching this video, they want to get a hold of either you two or, or the front office, whatever that looks like. How do they reach out? How do they get a hold and schedule appointments? Um, yeah, you can look up the Healing House. Um, uh, I think our handle is Healing House MHK. Mm -hmm. um, you can find that Facebook, Instagram. You can look us up on Google, the good old Google, and yeah. then give us a call. Um, give our front office a call. And yeah, that's Do those are the ways. Them. And then I guess my personal online oh, online booking. I'd say, you can, I'd say that's easiest. That's the easiest. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Go to the Healing House um, MHK.com mm -hmm. and you can online book with any of us um, through the Jane app. And then 
um, individually, my Instagram is at Dr. Kelly Nelson. Um, yeah, so there you go. I don't oh, know. Look at that. She's dropping the Instagram. Uh, yeah, it's no. It's not like I post anything on there. No, yeah. I know. Well, I, I post um, almost daily uh, at, at Sarah Siders and, and then you know, the Healing House uh, Instagram handle will also oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, feature all of us as we're sharing different things, events or trainings that we're doing, um, you know, or, or something that's happening here. So you can follow um, at Healing House MHK. There's some, you know, little, uh, I don't know what they're called, punctuation. Story? It's the the uh, the underlines. I don't know what they're called. Anyway, if we're going to clip this part out. <laughs> um, do you know what I'm talking about? It's underscore. Underline. Underscore. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, yes, we're, we're online. I would say that the best way to learn about us, yeah. healinghousemhk.com. You can see all our services, get to know our providers. Um, and then when you're ready, you can book online. You can see all the different services there. Um, and just set up an account with Jane, um, our medical platform. And um, we'll see you in the clinic. Um, I have free consultations. A lot of us have free or discounted consultations. Mm -hmm. If you just want to know um, a little bit about, uh, you know, getting to know that provider, it, would I be a good fit? Is yeah. this the right service for me? Yep. Um, do you have, you know, payment options for us? A lot of us are out of network. And so we absolutely do have payment mm -hmm. options to work with patients to make this accessible. Before we wrap it up, is there anything else that you guys want to add for anyone watching this video or, or anything there as far as to deal with the healing house itself? And I've got one more question after this. If you are just maybe looking for something different and you've tried other places and you're just not feeling it, um, and yeah, give us a shot because maybe we could be the person. I think the one of those things you need, everybody needs to remember is that you might see multiple different chiropractors in your life. You might see multiple different counselors in your life. Yep. You're going to go through a journey, no matter who it is. And sometimes a chiropractor or whoever type of modality, one person, how they do it is going to be better for you than other times. And so yep. I think that's just something to always remember. It's not that you're divorcing the chiropractor that you've been to going to for years. It might just mean that you need somebody just to get you through this specific time in your life. So, um, so yeah, I think that's just a takeaway that I would give. So for, um, people who are in the community that maybe are curious about what we're doing again, our website is such a great way to get to know some of the things that, that, that we do. Um, we are used to educating people when you're in alternative wellness or when you're doing holistic care for people, um, you know, part of my mental health practice includes, um, somatic and bilateral tools because, um, we live in a body, our head is attached to our body. We feel our own feelings and our emotions mm -hmm. in our body, trauma in our body, all of that. And so that's, that's another thing that's kind of really emerging on the scene. Yeah. Um, thinking about the nervous system as a key tool for healing in the mental health mm -hmm. space. Um, and so we we are ready to educate people if they're like, how could acupuncture or dry needling, how could herbalism or um, nutrition be part of my healing journey? Um, mm -hmm. I'm still, you know, my, my primary care doctor is amazing or, you know, I, there's some gaps in my in my care. Um, we want to be able to Go provide that education. Yeah, and we know people don't always know about these things. Yeah, uh, we're not expecting that you come in here and you're like well versed on all of these uh, modalities. Um, and so, if you're not sure um, how this could fit, but you can tell that there's a gap uh, in your in your health and your quality of life, maybe you are, um, you know, in entering your 40s or you're um, wanting to have kids at some point, and you're wanting to make sure that your body is strong for the next thing, mm -hmm. right? I'm coming out of perimenopause, menopause, um, the major changes in our bodies, um, we need to be strong and we need to be educated about um, our bodies and our minds and what's going on at these different stages that's so critical. And especially, I think for women, like we know intuitively that we are holistic, right? Yeah. Like when you have a baby, there's a physical thing that's happening, but it is very emotional. The, there's a hormone overlap. There's all these things going on. Um, life stages affect how we feel in our bodies and how we act in our relationships, how we understand ourselves. It is unbelievable. It's so good. You know what I mean? So good. And good so every chills. single stage has its own like holistic set yeah. of challenges and, and a way that we can emerge on the other side. And so if you're in the middle of something, you're like, what is going on? Or this is weird. I mean, I've been there myself. Like what is happening? Uh, perimenopause stage, um, 
you know, I've needed additional support at so many key times. Do not be afraid to ask for help. Do not think that you need to know everything before you show up here. Uh, we are happy to provide you with that education um, and help you get where you need to go, even if it's not us. Exactly. Um, we're going to help you make a solid exactly. referral because we care about you and we care about, um, you know, serving women and families. We know that if we do that, like we're going to build trust, right? 1, it's, it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a win-win no matter what. Yep. No, I love that. And back to what you guys have said the whole time, just teamwork, right? Yeah. You're teaming yes. up with us. Yes. Teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. My favorite question I always ask. So we get a lot of people that watch this, right? Or watch these videos and things. And a lot of them sometimes are entrepreneurs and things that way. You love women it. are entrepreneurs. What advice for either a seasoned or a new entrepreneur looking to get into business, whether it's in wealth and wellness or health, health and wellness, and wellness. Mix those up, uh, health and wellness, or or anything else, right? What advice would you give to those entrepreneurs? Let's from that one on you. Um, <laughs> I think don't feel like you have to know all the things <laughs> in the beginning because you're not going to. No. And don't feel like you have to start big. You can like I'm a good example. I I came in here and kind of did my own thing with Dr. Jessica and we did our own things for a while and we were each our one woman show and and now just now what 6 years later we have banded together to create something beautiful. So mm -hmm. know that it's it's all in God's timing and it's not all going to be perfect right off the bat. Yeah. It takes so such a long time I feel like yeah. for things to just be in the right timing and the, when they're supposed to be. So mm -hmm. so let that be okay and just roll with it and trust that it it, it will happen in its right timing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um my role before this, I worked with a nonprofit um, that helped people start businesses for three and a half years after starting um, my own business okay. um, and therapy practice. And um, so I've had this conversation from a lot of different angles. Um, I think the things that I've seen, you know, myself do wrong and also see other people do is they have something that they're good at. And they're like, I'm going to sell this product or service. And, you know, you need to know who you are. You need to know what you can do really well. And you need to know if there's a market for that. Mm. It's it, in, in your local area, especially if it's a service. Um, so for me, I can provide um, telehealth services across the state of Kansas. I can provide coaching services across the country, which I do. Um, but the way that I'm positioning myself in the market or the way that I talk about what I do, um, I have a lot of expertise. I've been practicing therapy for a long time. Um, but at the same time, if I'm not talking to my cl potential clients in a way they can understand, if I don't understand the needs of the market, I'm still learning about the changes sure. to this Manhattan area market um, and how they utilize therapy, what kinds of services they're looking for. Um, and you know, to be honest, I didn't do as much research as I you know, would have done if I was brand new. I thought that I was coming back into something that was similar. And so doing the market research and knowing who am I and like what kind of services am I excellent at and what do I want to do? And then what does the market want and need is so important. And then asking for help, building out your team, right? Yeah. Um, you're not going to be able to probably file your, um, you know, complicated LLC taxes without <laughs> any guidance or consultation, maybe in the beginning, uh, you know, when you're on the side, but, but having people that you can lean on, um, building out that, that team of people who, you know, your insurance, your, your legal folks, just yeah. those relationships. We keep talking about that. Um, knowing who to trust, um, having people for, you know, real estate opportunities. I mean, shout out to Kyle, but like knowing mm -hmm. people in the community that can help you find your place and navigate the things that you're not supposed to be an expert in. You're not, I'm not an accountant. Right I'm not now. an attorney. I'm not a real estate agent. I don't want to be right now. That's not my, my thing, but I need to know who's excellent at it, who cares. Yeah. And I need to have that relationship in place. Um, and so those would be things that I would say for um, entrepreneurs. Yeah. And we talked about this earlier off camera, spend the time, your time making it, getting, generating revenue and then, yeah. you know, get the marketing person to do the marketing things. Mm. So you can spend the time doing what you need to do. So. Yes. 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching this video today. I really do appreciate it. I hope you pulled something from this. Ladies, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, I, I, this was a lot of fun. I had a lot yeah. of fun today. This was a good one. So, and you guys, it, for you watching and you have questions or curious or just anything with this, please reach out to The Healing House. I promise you these ladies will be here to take care of you as well as the, what is it, four other women in here as well. And they all have their specialties and they all will take great, great care of you. And so please, please reach out, get on their website, get on there, book an appointment, book that consultation, whatever that is, and add it to that primary health care, right? It doesn't and, mm -hmm. or isn't a, or it's an and. Yeah. And so continue to reach out and continue to make that happen and continue to go down your journey of, of uh, health and wellness and, and kind of come in here and just kind of see what they're about. Because I promise you, you will not be disappointed and they will be here with open arms. So. Yeah. As always, thank you guys so much for watching today. Uh, if you do enjoy this content, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go and hit that little bell so you get notified of any future videos. And please, 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 if you know somebody who is interested in or just curious about The Healing House, share this video with them. Uh, talk where they can reach out to Kelly or Sarah and, and come in and see a little bit more about what they have uh, to make sure that they are taken care of in their health journey. So, uh, but again, thank you guys for watching this episode of Local Legends of Flint Hills, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>